but my favorite would have to be on the date of 18th of January 2010. I was at school and um, it was this history class. It wasn't going gra great. And when we walked home after the class, I was like, oh, this class was really bad. I absolutely hate it. And my friend goes, well, you never know. You might be in labor, you might be in pain. And I get home and a few hours after that talk with my friend, I got a call from my sister that she gave birth to my niece. So it all started from there that day. And I couldn't go see her right at the time because of how tiny she was. So I had to wait until the next day. And in, from my family, I was the first one to see her and actually hold her the next day. And it was one of those magical moments that I don't think anything will top it. Unless when I'm gonna have my own kid, that's probably gonna top it. But other than that, that was one of my favorite moments. And then ever since watching her grow into now almost 10 years old and being mini me basically, that's one of my favorite mo memories. So one of my favorite memories is I volunteered in Fiji for about a month, uh, living in a village uh, with a family. And one morning I uh, got up early, went and saw the sunrise, which was really beautiful, and then came and sat outside uh, writing uh, like my diary on the porch. And these two kids came up to me, they were like four and five, and they were trying to teach me some Fijian words, but their English wasn't any good. So they would just point at random things, say something, and I'd have to guess what it was. The funniest one was them patting their stomachs a lot, saying Fijian, and I had no idea if they were trying to tell me they were hungry, that it, what the word for stomach was, or anything like that. They were just patting quite enthusiastically. And it was just very sweet and very confusing. My favorite memory is the Christmas and New Year of 2016. It was when I had all my family with me for the last time, really, because we've lost a few since then. Um, my sons had both come home from Afghanistan, um, and it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. Just having everyone sat around the table and enjoying themselves. And we had a big party at the night, and everyone got very drunk. Um, but we had everybody with us. Sadly, we've lost a lot of, a lot of the grandparents and quite a few of the friends, and that is my memory, Christmas 2016. So, uh, I was planning on making a film, and I had no idea what to make, and I decided to get a rough idea, vaguely, from the Bible, and so I got this parable and just jumbled it up and made a mafia film out of it. Um, and it was one of my best films, and I had really good actors, um, a guy called Theo that I got involved, um, and I got a few other guys involved, and it was probably one of my best films. I got a really good camera, and I have it on YouTube, and it's UT Vision. That's my name, UT, then Vision. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's my fondest memory, because it was one of the best films I ever made on my channel. My earliest memories is when I swallowed a pound coin. So basically, from what I remember, it, uh, it happened when I was about four, and I was playing about with a load of pound coins, and somehow one ended up going down and going down my throat, and I swallowed it, and my parents had to take me up to A&E. And then what happened in A&E, the doctors were talking about pulling it out, and then um, I ended up throwing it out up in the waiting room in front of everybody else. So one of my favorite memories is actually one of my earliest memories as well. I must have been about five and my brother was about three and he'd just given me a present for my birthday or like when your parents give you a present from your younger sibling. Um, but my mom was like, oh, go give him a hug and say thank you. So I went over to give him a hug and he just smacked me square across the face. <laughs> so yeah. My favorite memory would have to be when my mum took me over to Rome for a week just to get away from all the stress of uni and home at, like, life at home and it was the best week we've ever had just us two in a nice place in a city we've never been to loads of history to see it was great uh, my favourite 
Uh, I'll say one of my favourite memories is when I first went to uh, Canada, which was just over the summer. To be fair, one of my one of my top ones. Uh, where I worked over there for the uh, summer uh, summer camp in uh, Vancouver, and um, looking after kids all over the world, uh, teaching them like bits of English, and taking them to activities such as sports, art, and uh, well, field trips as well. Going to uh, where did we go? Uh, what did we go? Uh, American football. Went to watch a game of that. Went to watch um, a bit of hockey and. Uh, yeah, the, the sites as well. The sites are awesome. Uh, the great views, and uh, yeah, that was probably one of my top uh, top ones. My favorite memory of all time is when me and a friend went to KFC, and uh, like the smart boys we were, we decided to share a family bucket, like the large one, the twenty piece, between the two of us, and uh, it was the best decision of my entire life because we scrammed it down. Like, we sat there for a good half an hour just munching on chicken, like, with the gravy and some corn, and oh, it was amazing. However, there's one problem with KFC, is that it's uh, really greasy. And <laughs> we came out of KFC, and, like, just suddenly my stomach dropped. Like, I hit the floor, and I was like, <laughs> like, all the grease had got stuck in, in my stomach. <laughs> And me and my friends, we had to run all the way back from town to our flat, like hobbling, trying to stop ourselves from exploding out the face and out the bum. <laughs> like, we had to climb these stairs, hunched over, and uh, immediately dashed for the bathroom. And uh, that was how I lost five pounds. Right, well, my favourite memory uh, is, uh, involves a group called Kraftwerk and a concert I went to in uh, June of 2017 at the Liverpool Philharmonic Hall. Um, the reason it's so special to me is that I'm, well, I'm a serial concert goer and I've, I've been to concerts for over 40 years and I love music and followed lots of bands and I've been very lucky to see groups like The Smiths, The Clash, Joy Division, um, Brian Wilson from the Beach Boys over the years, all fantastic in their own right. However, what makes Kraftwerk special is that they basically invented their own musical genre, that, that is electronic music, uh, mostly through synthesizers and, and drum machines. Um, they started off in Germany back in the 70s, um, really came from nowhere, and they were very influential on lots of bands throughout the... Um, certainly the late 70s, early 80s, and, and right through to hip-hop um, you know, in, the, in the early 90s. So groups like the Human League, um, Soft Cell, lots of synth synthesizer-based bands from that, from that uh, era. Even people like David Bowie were very um, drawn to what, what Kraftwerk were doing. They were a very enigmatic uh, group. They kept themselves to themselves. The stories of them are legend. You know, in many interviews, they had their own studios called Kling Klang in, in Dusseldorf in, uh, in Germany. And so they, this whole myth has been brought up around them uh, over the years. And they didn't do a lot of concerts. So when I got the chance to see them finally, in, 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 say, two, two years ago, you know, it was, you know, it was, it was fantastic. And we had, it's, it's quite a small uh, a venue as well, the Philharmonic. So you really felt you were up close and personal with them. Um, and of course, all this, um, all this sort of build-up, we'd bought the tickets almost a year before. The one thing you're hoping is they're not gonna, it's not going to disappoint. And it didn't. It, it lived up to all our expectations. They, um, right from the, the first strains of um, Computer World uh, to the last, the last track, uh, the, the Robots, um, it was just fantastic. The, the, there was a real crackle in the, in the whole theater you know people were really you could tell they was excited as, as, as the friends I was with on the night um, you know the, there was a 3d effect as well so we all had glasses to wear um, you know they, they didn't they say hardly anything on stage but the backdrop was fantastic they're all working behind their their keyboards and you you never the cynic in you could suggest are they actually playing these things because it's all it could all be tapes but you know probably not they were, they were they were visually, even though there's not a lot to see, it was still stunning. Um, there was a bit of humour when uh, the actual technology broke down and one of the music sort of ground to a halt. And 
the, the lead singer, or sorry, the lead singer, the, the main man in Kraftwerk, Ralph Futter, actually had to speak to us in the audience. He actually had to say a few words along the lines of, sometimes the technology doesn't always work, and it just seemed to fit in beautifully what, what was going on. So, uh, so it was just a fantastic moment, and uh, you know, one of those things I'm you know, always looking forward to seeing the group. It didn't disappoint, and uh, I think as favourite memories goes, that's, that's pretty good, don't you think? <laughs>